In this video, I'm gonna show you how to overlay lyrics and graphics in your live stream using the Blackmagic Designs A10 Mini. Hello, I'm Steven Ballast. Welcome to my channel where I explore worship technology solutions. This is the long-awaited part four of my series on the A10 Mini, where I'm gonna show you how to overlay or key lyrics over your video. Everything in this video and just about everything in my previous A10 Mini videos also applies to the newer A10 Mini Pro that was released since I started this series. The Pro adds additional features, but everything the Mini can do, the Mini Pro can do as well. So this video applies to both switchers. To overlay lyrics or graphics over your video using the A10 Mini, you use what's called a key. The Mini has one upstream keyer and one downstream keyer, and they have a little bit different functionality as we'll see in a minute. First, let's talk about how a key works and some of the different methods that are used. Keying is the process of removing part of a video image so that you can overlay what's left over another video image. We need to somehow communicate to the switcher what to remove and make transparent and what it should leave. What's our content? In the A10 Mini, there are actually many different ways to key an image, but I find the most useful to be Luma keying chroma keying, and masking. I do have another video where I demonstrate a method called linear keying with a full-size ATEM switcher. Linear keying will give you the cleanest and most consistent key, but it requires two inputs to the switcher and special hardware to generate those two signals. So on a budget four input switcher like the Mini, I don't think it's very practical. But if you're interested in seeing that, you can check out that video. I'll have a link to it down in the description of this video. Luma keying works by removing parts of the overlaid image based on brightness. Black areas are removed and made transparent, and the switcher leaves behind brighter areas. This works best with a black background and white text because there is a wide separation in brightness from the background to content. Chroma keying removes a color that you define. A lot of people are familiar with green screen. That would be a chroma key. But it's important to note that it doesn't have to be green. You could use any color that you define to be removed. And then masking works by defining a specific location and size in the image to leave and remove the rest. So knowing what the switcher needs to create the key, let's talk about how to generate that as an input to the switcher. Specifically, I'm gonna be talking about worship presentation software. But anything that can generate a graphics output, even PowerPoint, could be used as your source for keying. First of all, understand that this is coming into the switcher on one of its HDMI inputs. So we need to be able to generate this as a physical display out from our computer. In the context of worship presentation software, we are gonna need a computer that has at least three physical outputs. The control screen or operator screen, the main display that goes to our local projection screens, and then finally the overlay display going to our A10 Mini. If you use the stage display functionality that most worship presentation software has, that would be a fourth display output. So the first thing you're gonna need to do to make this work is make sure your computer hardware is capable of that many physical outputs. I have three displays running on this laptop. The laptop screen is my operator display, the HDMI output is going straight to input four of my A10 Mini. That's gonna be my overlay output. And the VGA output is going to my main projection output that will be shown to the audience in the room. And that's showing up on the TV back there. In Windows display settings, you can see that I have all three displays configured to extend the desktop rather than duplicate. Right now, the software that I think deals best with multiple display outputs and unique content being sent to each of those is the new version 7 of ProPresenter. Other presentation software will do this to varying degrees or not, but I think the new version of ProPresenter has the simplest, most direct way to generate all the differently formatted outputs that you need from the software. And the fact that ProPresenter is now functional on PC, it makes this cost effective as well. So let's take a look at how to set this up in ProPresenter and generate the content that we need. First, in ProPresenter, we need to configure our three display outputs, or screens as they call it. So go to the Screens menu 
and select Configure Screens. The default audience screen is usually the main projection screen's output. So I'm gonna rename that main projection. Then in the output drop-down box, make sure that the correct physical output from the computer is selected. In this case for me, it's the VGA output. Now I'm gonna add another screen for our overlay output. So click the plus and select BMD HDMI, which is the HDMI output that is connected to the mini. And that's all I need to do here, so click the X at the top of the window to close this dialog. Now that we have multiple displays configured, we need to format what goes to each of those displays. So I'm gonna go back to the Screens menu again and select Edit Looks. And here we can see some options for each of our display outputs. You can select what things get sent to each display, but more importantly, by the option Presentation, we can select a theme to be used for that particular display. Main projection, I'm going to leave as none, so it will take the theme I select under theme here at the top. But for the overlay, I'm going to select a theme. Now it doesn't matter what theme you select because we're going to go edit the theme to meet the requirements of our key. So now when I run lyrics for a song, we get our lyrics on two different outputs formatted differently. I'm using OBS here to show the output from the switcher, and I've selected input 4, which is the HDMI overlay input from the computer. Now here's where I need to make a decision about what type of keying I'm going to be doing. If all I want is white lyrics overlaid over my video, Luma keying is probably the way to go. You'll need to go into the theme editor, and we need to make the background black for the theme. I'm going to delete this line here and move the text box to the bottom of the screen. On the ATEM, if we select input 4, we see the text coming in just like it should be from ProPresenter. In the ATEM control software, we can do a Luma key in the upstream or downstream keyer. So let's look at the downstream keyer first. I'm going to set the key and fill source to camera 4. I like to start with gain at 100% and clip at 0, and then turn on the key. So we'll select a camera input on our program bus and turn on the DSK by clicking the on air button. And what we see is that input 4 is now on top of and covering our camera input 1. Bring up the clip setting until the black is removed and becomes transparent. And there we have our lyrics overlaid on top of our video. You can switch between camera inputs 1 through 3, and the lyrics stay overlaid on top. To turn the key on and off, just click the on air button to cut it on or off, and press the auto button to fade the key on and off. Pressing the tie button will tie the turning on and off to your next transition. So if the key is off and you press tie, when you do your next auto or cut transition, your lyrics key will turn on with that transition. That's Luma Keying. It works great for simple white lyrics. As long as your graphics are pretty bright, it will work okay. The problem with Luma Keying is that if your content in your graphics is pretty complex and has some darker areas, you'll start to get holes in the content. So in that case, one solution would be to use Chroma Keying. To set up a Chroma Key in ProPresenter, let's create a theme from scratch. In the theme editor, click the plus symbol, and I'll give this theme a name, purple background lower third. You could probably create this right in ProPresenter, but for the sake of this demonstration, I have this image I've already created that has green where I want it to be transparent, and a small background bar at the bottom where I want the text to go. I'll just drag that into the theme. Then go to Editor, Insert, Text, and I'll drag the size of this box to my background bar. Now under Screens, Edit Looks, I've got to select this theme now for my overlay output. And if we look at what's coming in on input 4 of the mini, it's our green background with the bar at the bottom. This time, let's use the upstream keyer for the chroma key. So go to the upstream key tab, and again select camera 4 for the fill source, 
And then in Chroma Sample, we can click on the color box and it's gonna let us pick a place on the screen to sample our color to key out and make transparent. We know that anywhere at the top of the screen will work. Now turn the upstream key on with the on air button here over key one and our overlay will show up on our video. I found that I needed to adjust the key edge a bit to get rid of some green at the edge of my purple background. The upstream keyer operates a little differently than the downstream keyer in that it doesn't have its own ability to fade on and off. The only way to get it to fade in is with the key one button here, which operates like the tie button of the downstream key in that once the key one button is pressed, the key will transition on with your next transition of the switcher. You can still just turn it on and off with a cut using the on air button. Also note that the key on and off buttons on the surface of the mini are for this upstream key. So once you have the upstream keyer configured in the software, you don't have to use the software to operate it. The limitation of chroma keying is that if the content that you want to overlay contains too much of the color that you're using for your key, like green, then you'll again start to get some holes in what you're overlaying. So I do want to show you one more way you can overlay content, and that's using a mask. In the downstream keyer or the upstream keyer, check this mask option and it gives me some numbers here that define four corners of a rectangle. I want to reset my clip to zero and gain to 100. And when I turn on the key, I can use these numbers to select the area of the screen to keep. Then it doesn't matter what the content looks like, as long as it's in that area of the screen, it will be overlaid over the video. So that's how you can overlay your lyrics over your video. I originally said I was gonna do four videos about the A10 Mini, and a lot has happened since I started this series, which has caused it to drag on longer than it should have. So I apologize for that if you've been waiting for this last video. But that also means a lot has happened, like the A10 Mini Pro has been released, which adds two really great features. One, it has a built-in multi-view. And second is the ability to live stream right from the Mini Pro through its ethernet connection without even needing a computer. So all of this to say, this may not be my last video about the A10 Mini switchers. I may put together a final wrap up video about some things I've learned about the Mini over the last few months. So if you have any questions about this switcher, leave those in the comments. And if you haven't already, be sure and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any of my future videos. I've got a lot of other videos coming that have been bottled up over the last few months. So be sure and check those out. Until next time, bye.